Apes, you hey, don't tell Mojang. Today we're creating a block x-ray in the latest version of Minecraft. Meteor is open source. You can download the latest version on their webpage or visit the GitHub link at the top and you'll see the default modules listed. Block ESP or highlighting specific blocks in the world relies heavily on Meteor's internal rendering pipelines and they do describe their own custom pipelines. Fabric has a tutorial on doing something very similar, but theirs is a lot more drawn out. You have to render custom pipelines. You have to add your own vertexes for the different faces. Instead of this, we're going to leverage Minecraft's internal debug rendering. Using Fabric's template mod generator, we can develop a mod against the latest snapshot. We need to edit these files to make sure our mod only runs client side. Starting in my client, we'll change this to client mod initializer from Fabric, and this should be on initialize client. Along with that change, we'll update Fabric mod JSON and change the entry point from main to client. You could delete this example mix in, but if you want to keep it with something similar, we'll use Minecraft instead and we'll inject into class in it. We can hover over this and make sure it's static. We'll also change this from mixins to client. You can use the build task to generate a valid jar or directly launch into the game using run client. I'm in 26.1 snapshot two in a modded environment. I'm gonna connect to a land world and I connect without any issues. It's very easy to reach for the regular debug renderer, but if you go to admit gizmos, you have to remember that debug rendering usually happens when you press F3. What we're gonna do instead is actually leverage the game test block highlight renderer here. And this is rendered normally when admit gizmos is called. If you're familiar with this, but you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you that cuboid returns gizmo properties. Gizmo properties has a set always on top method. Before we use this, let's examine what the class actually does. We have a map of block positions to markers and a marker simply tracks a color the short string of a position and the time to remove the marker we can see markers created in highlight pause this is a transparent green the text is a position as a short string xyz and the time to remove would be now plus 10 seconds we also see a method for clearing the map which is important to note further down we have emit gizmos and here we check if the time is greater than the markers remove at time if it's not removed then we render the marker, which calls to gizmos cuboid, and this renders a cube along with some text above it, like a name tag almost. When you join a new level and set level is called, these highlights will be clear. One issue we'll have is that marker is private, so we need to make this public, and Fabric has a feature called access wideners, which allows us to do that. Under resources, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to use my mod ID, which is my client for me, and then I'll do dot access widener. Inside of this file, we're going to start by typing out access widener again, and then do v1 official. If we close it and reopen it, we see there's no actual issue. To make this public, I'm going to right click. I'm hovering over copy paste special, and we're going to use aw entry for the access widener. I'm going to press enter and paste it. Now we have a file and we have something that should widen access, but we need to add a few more lines to actually register this file basically. Inside of build.gradle, we're gonna scroll down under dependencies and create a new section called loom. We can start typing access widener and we see access widener path. We're going to do a dot set method and we'll use file, which is a built-in method. And inside of quotes, we can type out this full path and under main, under resources, and we're selecting our access widener file. Now we can reload. We could also use this button here. Let's open the class again. And scrolling down, we see that this is public now. Now let's make sure they don't get removed at all. Let's create a new mixin file. Call it the same name with mixin at the end. I'll do at mixin, then game test block highlight renderer, the one from Minecraft. We need to make sure it has dot class at the end. You don't have to follow me exactly. I'm just gonna describe what I'm doing. We're gonna make it so only this line is called. I'm gonna start by describing an injection. This is gonna be at the head. We're going to target emit gizmos. I usually write something basic and then I'll hover over it and fix it. And that'll work for more complicated injections too. Now I'm going to copy this line. We need to make sure that we can use this dot markers. And if we start typing that out and auto complete it, it'll shadow it for us via mixin. Same with render marker. And we also want to make this cancelable. We basically copy and pasted the last line to the top and canceled the rest from happening. And we can replace the example with our game test block highlight. In theory, we can highlight a pause at any time, but joining a new level would make it reset and clear the positions. So you could get Minecraft and highlight a position as soon as you load into the game. But that doesn't make any sense because as you join a level, it would get cleared unless you overwrite that logic as well. As a demonstration, I'm just going to highlight block pause zero, which would be zero, zero, zero. And we're going to make sure we only call to this once via already activated, which is just a Boolean. And we only call to this if we're in a level. I'm going to connect to my own server. I'm in spectator mode, but in survival, this would still be highlighted. But one thing to notice is we haven't set it to always on top. So it's still going to be hidden behind blocks right now. In the exact same way that we injected into emit gizmos. And what we're doing is making sure that only this line is called in render marker. And we're just adding set always on top to the end of that and canceling any of the rest of this logic from happening. Now we just have the cube rendered and moving back. 
we can see it stays rendered even going through multiple blocks. Let's break this down and talk about the things that we need to keep a track of. So we have a block that we want to search for, and we're going to be searching for diamond ore, which is kind of cliche. And we also want a list of block positions, and this tracks the diamond ore that gets discovered in the world. If we check out client packet listener, you'll see this method, handle level chunk with light. So when the client is receiving a chunk from the server, we're going to inject some logic in here to search for the diamond ore. We need to write that logic first, so let's create a new class. We're just going to call it chunk packet logic, and this is going to have a public static method that doesn't return anything, and it's going to process the same packet that we see described here. Let's grab our instance of Minecraft, and we're going to use level chunk. We're going to get the chunk directly from the client level using the packets X and Z. Get chunk may produce null pointer exception because MC level might be null. I'm going to see if mc.level is null, and then return early if it is. So we have the chunk data. Now we need to iterate over every block in that chunk. So we're going to create a mutable position, so it's basically reusing the same object over and over. So we'll do block pause dot mutable about that block pause and create a new mutable block pause so we're iterating in three dimensions x y and z so we're going to have three four loops and we're going to do x and z first and then iterate over y so let's do a four i with x a four i with z and then four i with y in the very middle x is going to start at the chunk dot get pause min x we're going to go until it's equal to the max x copy that Paste that here and change all of this to Z's. Now the Y is going to be a little bit different. So we'll create an int height. We're going to use chunk dot get or create height map unprimed. We can start typing world surface and it should bring up the enum for us. We want to get the first available. Inside of this get first available, we're going to have X minus the minimum block X and Z minus the minimum block Z. So let's follow this. Get first available is called with those parameters and those are passed to get index. Get index returns the sum of those multiplied by 16, basically retrieving an internal representation of where this block is at. So for Y, we're gonna start at MC level dot get min y we're going to go until y is equal to height let's update the block pause with dot set we're going to use x y and z now let's get the block state at that position we're just going to do chunk dot get block state and pass it that position so we receive a packet we decompose it into its chunk data and we iterate over every position in that chunk and now we have access to the block state of each individual block if that block state is the block that we're looking for we also need to make sure we don't track the block twice now we set a new position as immutable. We're going to add that to our tracked list. And using Minecraft's level renderer and its underlying highlight renderer, we're going to highlight that position. So when we receive a chunk, we decompose it into chunk data. We iterate over every block in that chunk. And if that block state matches the block that we want to find and we're not already tracking that position, we'll begin to track an immutable version of that position and set the block to be highlighted. Now we actually need to inject our logic into this method. I'm going to create a new mixin called client packet listener mixin. I'll do at mixin. This will be into client packet listener. Make sure we have dot class at the end. I'm going to describe an injection. This will be into the method of hand level chunk with light we want our logic called at the very last return so that would be all the way down here i filled out a basic method and i'm going to fix the signature and all i'm doing here is calling to our chunk packet logic and processing that packet we're going to update our mixins file and add in our new client packet listener mixin connecting to my server and you see blocks lighting up all around you now i put myself in spectator mode so we can find one of these hopefully that's exposed this is a regular diamond ore and i'm assuming this is well obviously this is deep slate iron ore you can also see how this green box is slightly offset from the block itself. And if we check out cuboid here, we see the padding 0 0.02. If we follow this, you can see padding being used to inflate and access align bounding box here. And all inflate does is add the same amount in all directions. You'll see that here. So we could also just make this smaller, such as subtracting this amount. You can see how it's rendering smaller cubes inside of the ore now. This is a very hard coded demonstration. I do challenge you to create your own version of this and recreate it yourself. And let me know if there's a specific module or a different kind of feature that you want to see in these hacked client tutorials. Thanks for watching.